Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Berkey Cabinet featuring AJ and... Jessica! Today's episode, we have a Mickers. It's really funny to say, and to me forever to say it properly and correctly. Say it one more time. Mickers. Mickters. Mickters. No, Mickters. Mickters. Mm-hmm. Mickters. So I said Mickters. Now you're on the right track. I said, I okay. That's not what I have no idea what I said now. <laughs> uh, so... A little bit around Mictors here. Um, first off, we will be sampling their small batch today. Uh, they also likewise do a single barrel. They can have a rye naturally. Um, and then they have the uh, their 10 years as well. I'm not sure. I don't I, I think that they also do a toasted one. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of different variants with them. Um, but, anywho. Why are you ripping the whole thing off? Just keep going. <laughs> okay, anyways. Never allowed to do that again. Um, Cause clearly so, this shit didn't work right. Use your nail, you just cut the we damn nails, paper. I don't have nails. Then pass it over next time before destroying the bottle. Okay, sorry, anyways, we're just gonna ignore him now. Um, so, Mictors was founded in 1753. Um, they had started off as Shanks. Uh, Shanks actually is still produced every once in a while um, by the, the now Mictors Corporation or Dist Distillery, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, but uh, after Shanks, it switched over to Bombergers in the 1800s. Um, well, likewise, Bombergers is still something you can find somewhat, uh, well, both of which are going to be very difficult to find, but you can find them. Um, and then it switched over to Mictors in the uh, mid-20th century. Um, they are located in Louisville, and then they have a farm where they produce their own crops and everything out in uh, Springfield, uh, Kentucky, naturally. A uh, fun little fact about this one is that Mictors was one of the first bourbons that I actually enjoyed and that actually got me into my bourbon problem that I have today. So um, it's been quite a while since I've had their small batch. Uh, it's nice to go back to my own roots, but yeah, uh, this will be exciting because I've had so many since having this. <laughs> now I will say uh, I don't know if I've had this before. If I have had it, it was just a sample of it of some sort it wasn't that i went out and found a bottle and bought it and all this and that i literally just or <laughs> talking really say she's the one who introduced me to everything now you know if we end up liking this this bottle cannot go up on display because how you destroyed it right how i destroyed the little thingies here that can easily be fixed by taking the rest of it off yeah i no i don't want you to take any of it off like i don't want to okay You know, don't gotta say it, because it's always gonna be true. What is this one, 91 point something? I don't know. Yeah, 91.4 proof. 91.4 proof. That's a really oddly specific. I love it. It's a wonderful number. Wonderful number. A lot going on. This one does carry a little bit more of a barrel. Mm. I smell some uh, some darker notes with this one. Oh, it's so funny. I'm actually getting that alcohol rub. What are you talking about? Like, I just felt like my nose just got cleaned out. <laughs> something else on the tip here it's like it smells kind of sweet um, there's something on the on the rim there yeah cherry i think that might be what it is yeah cherry and wood not the charredness but the barrel itself oh gosh yeah that's burning the crap out of my nose uh for some reason <laughs> don't know that i can't help it it's what i do I don't really get much of any caramel or vanilla or nothing like that. I mean, it's really just like a sweet cherry smell and, and barrel. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely something along those lines. It does smell like there's something else in there that I'm missing. 
like I'm not being able to describe. My descriptors aren't good enough. God, this just burns too fucking bad. Like, <laughs> for some reason today, my allergies have been kicking my butt though. <laughs> One of the problems of living in Kentucky. Beautiful state. Terrible place to live. Well. Let's just try it. So nice. I'm waiting for the day that we do that and they just and shatter everywhere though. So I'll tell y'all now, I don't like the the initial taste. It's uh, funky. It's really kind of weird, but then it, it mellows out to a, what a bourbon would kind of sort of taste like. It's still like a fruity aftertaste in there. I'm, I'm getting like, a, maybe it's a cherry aftertaste a little bit with it. I don't know. For myself, I would say that it has a little bit of that, um, has a little bit of the barrel. Uh, has more of the hug, the Kentucky hug in the chest, but it will start to go to the throat a little bit. Um, yeah. Did yeah. you say you like it more for the aftertaste and not the initial? Yeah, I think the aftertaste is better than the initial taste. The initial taste just is different, surprising for sure. I don't really expect these kind of flavors because when we were smelling it, you know, smelling barrel cherries, alcohol mm. rub, mm. Mm. that you would think that you would get the similar, similar notes that we got from the other bourbons. But this one, the initial taste, there's different, I feel like there's different notes that I'm getting out of it. But then the aftertaste, it starts to taste more like a somebody's bourbon. Like it would actually be a bourbon. So I get initially caramelized hay like it's got that sweetness of caramel but it tastes like hay um <laughs> and then like in this middle of my palate i get nothing but the the sweetness so that that caramel um and then i get that cherry flavor that you were talking about and everything and then it slowly creeps into the barrel flavor right afterwards towards the end there um i'm not a huge fan of this aftertaste um, you know, I probably really wouldn't be that bad if I had a good cigar to go with it, but this is a non-smoking home, so that's not happening right this second to make this better. <laughs> uh, but it's not bad. I mean, it's really not bad. I mean, honestly, it's been so long since I've had this. I'm, I'm surprised that this was the first one I liked. <laughs> but then again... The only ones that I had before this one was like Heaven Hill Green Label and Baker's Mark and Woodford. And it's like, yeah, okay. Naturally, this is going to be way better than all three of those that I just listed. <laughs> so, I don't know. Rating? Mm -hmm. I would probably give this something more along the lines of like a five. It's, it's okay. Um, again, the aftertaste is better to me than the initial taste. The initial taste, it doesn't seem like it burns at first, but then it starts to burn later. Uh, but yeah, it just, I don't know. I guess it's because there's not as much oomph in it and not as much it's not the flavors that I would necessarily enjoy. Now, somebody else would probably enjoy this a lot more, but mm. for me, myself, no, I'm, I'm gonna give it a five. Mm. What about you? I still really like Mictors, but we've had a lot of, a lot of way better things on this show. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not that it's bad, it's just, I mean, it's decent, but it's nothing spectacular. I mean, you know what? I guess my rating, I would give it 5.6. What? 5.6? Mm-hmm. Not 5.5. Uh, 5.6, 5. 5. Steve? Okay. 5.6. It's a little bit 
bit better than five and a half. But I definitely cannot come near touching six for other things that I've previously listed as a six, so. How much round up to make it six? No. No rounding. <laughs> I try to usually round for you to get to the next five. But I, I'm i sick of doing that. I'm sick of doing it. But I mean, I really, ultimately, it's not bad. It's just... Nothing spectacular. There's a lot more interesting flavors in the world than what this offers. So, but as a good like basic starter bourbon, because if you don't like the flavor of this, you need, there's slim chance you're gonna like the flavor of any like actual like more barrel flavored bourbon. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? So, yeah. Like, if you can't get past this, then you're not going to like like anything that's like double oaked or. <laughs> anything that's just really heavy on the char or the barrel flavor. So this is like a good milestone, stepping stone to figuring out your own preferences, you know? And, and how much is this normally? It's like between 40? 40 and 50. I wanna say it's like 40, 45, yeah. Cause I know they have like several different kinds mm -hmm. of it, but when we were to the store today, looking at, there was three of them side by side. And I had three different ones. I, I, well, I ignored the bourbon stand sitting next to it because I was like, got that at home. I'm pretty sure it's between like <laughs> 40 and 50 bucks. Mm, that sounds about right. Yeah, I'd say about 45, yeah. Tink yes. again. Tink again. Cheers, guys. I must have taken it as a shot my first time. That is so much better as a shot. Holy hell. Oh yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk since I took my shot first. Um, For me personally, I got, it was just such a good well-roundedness of all the sweet notes and the um, barrel notes that you could possibly ask for. I mean, there's like no charredness. Uh, it's not super heavy on the cherry. It's not heavy on the caramel. It's not heavy even on the wood itself. Like it is just all around well-rounded for a shot. Um, to give it a rating, I, I don't, honestly, I boost up to a good. 6.7. I know you look down because you don't like my 7. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I would say it is maybe, I guess, slightly better than a shot, but I don't think it's to the point of where I can even upgrade the the numbers on it on my rating so I'm gonna get the shot at five as well and the reason why I say that is because initially like she was saying there's not much that you're gonna get at the beginning of it but then for me it's part of the aftertaste alcohol rub surprisingly enough I'm not gonna lie I didn't like the aftertaste it, it wasn't alcohol rub for me but it was hay <laughs> so so instead of the beginning you got it at the end yeah nobody really wants to be gnawing on a piece of hay that's why I waited a few minutes and as soon as the hay got overwhelming I took a sip of Pepsi <laughs> yeah for me for me it just I'm gonna keep it as a five it's mediocre it's definitely a good something to kind of get introduced to if you don't want what everybody's trying to tell you to get Woodford Eagle Rare blah 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 this is definitely a, it's it's a nice to have something different in your arsenal, and this is this is worth picking up for sure, especially how cheap it is. Um, I gotta say though, for only being ninety one proof, like it tastes like it should be higher. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree because I don't. Well, if it's any higher, it won't get. It, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it should get past a hundred proof. No, I mean no. I think a hundred proof is where it should be though. I disagree, personally. True. I've just had 130 some odd proofs that are sweeter than that. Uh, yeah, I know. There's 134 proof of something very special. Very special. But anyway, so <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode of the Brecky Cabinet. On the next episode, more bourbon. 
odds, plain and simple. Wow, <laughs> surpriser. <laughs> uh, so until next time, uh, ja, matane. <laughs> Surely, to God, that was a lot faster.